Today we're going to take a look at how to program a continuous servo using the MakeCode software. Now one of the things to consider as you are going through using a continuous servo is that unlike the standard servo, our continuous servo is all programmed based on speed. And we need to be able to not only turn our servo on in a clockwise direction at full speed, but we also need to be able to reverse that direction at full speed or change the speed as we see fit. We'll also need to find a way in order to stop the servo. And there's multiple ways that we can go ahead and do that. Uh, but today I'm going to show you the easiest way, and that is basically by turning the power off to the pin. So you'll see on our flow chart that we have basically three separate event handlers, a button A, button B, and a button A, B press. Now I'm going to show you two different ways that you can program this, either using three separate event handlers as seen on the screen, or by using one conditional statement um, that will also go ahead and do the same thing. But basically, when the button A is being pressed, we want to be able to set our servo to full speed in a clockwise direction. Button B will turn it to full speed in a counterclockwise direction, and AB will stop our servo. Now, a few things to keep in mind as we go through MakeCode is that um, our MakeCode is not set up to run the emulator with a continuous servo. So you are going to see a standard servo as we are going through this. And in order to actually see the outcome of our program, you will need to connect your servo um, up based upon the wire diagram that is seen on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at MakeCode. And one of the first things that we're going to use are our three event handlers of an on A button press, on B, and an on A B. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate them. And we can change them so that we have an on A, an on B, and then we'll also go ahead and drop our A B button press. So now the next thing we're going to need to do is just like our standard servo is we're going to go down to our pin drawer and we're going to go ahead and select servo right pin and we're going to leave this on pin zero and based on our flow chart here we want to be able to go in a clockwise direction now depending on how the servo is mounted is going to depend on how clockwise actually is going to be running so you can see that with our 180 we're going to go ahead and switch that to zero so we're going to say that that zero is going to be full speed in a clockwise direction. Now, in order to reverse the direction in full speed, we're going to need to take that same servo right pin block and reverse that to 180 degrees. Now, if you have the servo calibrated correctly, you can go ahead and use that servo right pin, and we can go ahead and drop in the value of 90. 90 is that middle value, and that is what's going to actually stop the servo. But if your servos are not calibrated or off just a little bit, the way that we can create that stop feature without calibrating is by going back to our pins and going and saying digital right pin. And we're going to set pin zero to be zero. So we're basically going to turn the power off, and that is going to stop the servo whenever the AB button is being pressed. Now, we can use a conditional statement, and I mentioned this in the previous video of using our standard servo, that we can still do this using a forever loop. But if we're going to be using a forever loop, we need to create a couple different logic statements. So I'm going to bring in my if statements, and I'm going to add two additional else ifs and get rid of my else. Now, we can bring these in to our program, but the thing we have to consider when using a condition like this is that when we are pressing the A and B button, if I have my A button is being pressed in that if statement, it's always going to check that condition first. So even though you're pressing the AB button together, it's going to read that as the A button has been pressed first, then the B button, and then the AB. So in order to kind of get around that, what we're going to add instead is we're going to add the AB button as my first condition. And if we add that AB as the first condition, then that's always going to read if both of them are selected or being pressed then we want to be able to take that digitally right pin and turn that off and then from there we can go ahead and add our on a button and our on b button press in my else if statements and the code for this is, is very much the same if the b button is being pressed we're going to go ahead and set that to 180 and if the a button is being pressed we're going to go ahead and set that to zero so either one of these codes will work for you once you connect your servo. Um, it's just a matter of how you want to actually do this. Uh, I see a lot of students use the forever loop, and they tend to get these backwards a little bit, but it depends on what your code is actually calling for. So there are two different ways that you can go ahead and do this. 
uh, both will work fine. Um, you can also go ahead and, as mentioned before, use that servo right pin, pin zero to 90, if you're gonna teach your students how to calibrate those servos. Um, other than that, the digital right pin zero to zero will work just as well to turn off the power to your servo motor.